You know, horror games are something I always avoided as a kid. They were too scary. The ability to immerse yourself the way you do while playing a horror game is different. It's not the same thing as throwing on Friday the 13th or Goosebumps. When playing a horror game, you're actually in there. You can see, you can hear, you can interact. You're in control of the movement. Any more immersive than you, you just be a victim. But those days of peeing myself while playing the scary maze are over. I'm a man now. And now, I ain't scared of no purple dude, no hillbillies, and especially not no grandma. Today, ladies and gentlemen, same way we did for the horror and the action movies, we're gonna be going over horror games I could easily survive. And I'll be giving you guys my strategy, my game plan, my thought process, and of course, some of the ones that I can. Imagine you witness your next door neighbor commit what looks like to be a murder or at least a kidnap. And after witnessing this, you, the main character, decide to go investigate his super elaborate home yourself. But while you're in there, you have to constantly avoid this man capturing you, or you might be the next victim. Well, that's the plot of Hello Neighbor, a potentially murderous, kidnapping, middle-aged man. I didn't learn about this game through conventional means since I was a bit too old for it at the time, but I did see my little cousin who was obsessed with it play it. And while it is an extremely scary concept on paper, you a kid investigating the super complex home of a potential criminal who may or may not murk you when he catches you, that's scary stuff. But don't let it fool you. This game is light. I actually have one very, very easy solution for this. One that can be done at the very beginning of the game. How about you just mind your business. I know, I know, crazy. Crazy to think that you could just do that. But it's true. All this started because us, the main character, felt this intrinsic urge to become Sherlock Holmes after witnessing something a little sus. Like just turn around and look the other way, my boy. Look, I didn't grow up in the best neighborhood when I was younger. And even back then, I knew if I seen something like an old man getting jumped, all I could do is shut my mouth, keep it stepping, and pray for gramps. It sounds messed up, but I'm sorry. It's the truth. But if y'all do want to go the good civilian route, all the kid really had to do was call the authorities. You don't even need no evidence or nothing just tell the cops your neighbor's a minority and you heard a white woman screaming in the house they're gonna be there in two minutes bust that door wide open and shoot first and ask questions later problem solved a lot of y'all probably already know this game but if you don't there's a horror game where you the main character are investigating a shutdown toy factory after the disappearance of a bunch of employees 10 years ago and while in there you discover you're not alone. There are these things, these entities, these toy monsters that come after you while you're trying to figure it all out. And I'ma keep it a buck. I'm probably not surviving. Not only are these things going after you, all bloodthirsty toy monsters, but all of them are clearly on something. I can see it in their eyes. Huggy Wuggy got them dilated pupils, probably on some LSD or blue crystal or something. Poppy, Poppy's obviously coked out. Look at those blood vessels. And Mommy Longlegs, she might be off the same thing as Poppy. Either that or she has some severe BPD. And I mean severe. Because the way her mood switches from Mommy was just playing, come back. <laughs> okay, okay, joke's over. Mommy doesn't like cheaters. <laughs> come back over here. Get your ass off! Combo that with the prototype running around doing I don't know what. And in the third game, which I haven't played yet, they introduced hella new monsters, including a freaking cat. Not only did they get me already with my fear of dolls, but now they're using my allergies against me. Yeah, I'm finished. Now, while this one may look like a simple indie horror game, no joke, it's actually one of the scariest ones you could play. The whole time you're paranoid, on edge, and just waiting for something to happen. If this is how girls feel while walking alone at night, I am so sorry, I'll cross the street next time. There's a Japanese horror game where you play as a female barista working in a Starbucks type coffee shop, and I've never worked in the food industry before, but from what I hear, it's horrible. A horror game in and of itself. You have the clothing shift, obviously, and on top of having an annoying supervisor, as the nights go on, you start noticing some weird stuff going on around the shop. Strange noises, items missing, strange people coming in, strange people staring at you from outside until you eventually realize you're being stopped. Stalker alert. We got a stalker on our hands, ladies and gentlemen. Eventually coming face to face with them at the end. Boom, we got the lore. While this one may seem simple because it's just a regular regular human, no special abilities, at the most, maybe a knife, it's not. There are two things in this game that could cause me some trouble. One is the girl we're playing as is clearly not in the best financial situations. She's B to the R to the O to the K to the E, a college student. That affects the first plan I had, which was to just quit your job. We quite literally can't afford to do that. I know how it feels to be living off mayo sandwiches and instant ramen, and I'm not putting this girl through that. So the next immediate counter I thought of was just tell your supervisor you want to switch shifts. You don't lose your job, you keep that bread coming in, and you stay away from all the creepy activities. That could work, that could work.
if I knew how to speak Japanese? How would I even communicate? How? How? There's no subtitles in real life, drawings, ASL, Morse code. How did I even get this job? Only things I know how to say in Japanese are what, stop, and domain expansion. So communication wise, I'm cooked. Can't even call the cops. Meaning my only choice for the situation is to defend myself. So. Here's the plan. We know the dude stalking us is seriously obsessed with us, judging by those notes he be leaving and the pictures he be taking. And as creepy as that may be, it could be used to our advantage. It'll seem like a regular shift. I'll be whipping up some coffee, some lattes, when in the corner of my eye, I'll see the stalker watching me through the glass. He'll probably be imagining doing some heinous things to me. I, I don't know, I don't stalk people often. But he won't know that I have him right where I want him. As he's staring at me through the glass, he'll notice in the corner of his eye, a coffee I left on the table. And this wasn't no ordinary coffee. This was a coffee with my lipstick on it. He's a creep, so he immediately wouldn't be able to resist adding this precious item to his precious collection. So he walks into the shop swiftly, trying to get the cup before I can even notice while I'm dealing with some customers. But like I said earlier, I got him right where I want him. Before he could take another step, he hears it. Yomiro! Yoichi Tenkai! Mugen no Guroku! No introduction needed, we all know the name. Some of y'all may know, I faced these guys before when I did the horror movie version of this video. And let's just say, I uh, I body yeah. But that was the movie, which is way easier than the game. When it comes to the game, before you can even think of coming up with a plan, you gotta ask yourself, which game am I talking about? FNAF 1, 2, 3, Help Wanted, or Help Wanted 2? Or maybe Sister Location, or FNAF 4, or FNAF 4 Halloween Edition, or Security Breach? All these games have different locations with different enemies you gotta deal with. Some have four animatronics, some have one, some have 50. It's ridiculous. But if we're to go down the list, FNAF 1, I think I can handle it. I may not have worked in the food industry, but I have worked security. And when you have experience like I do, the answer for this one is simple. There is no way I am working a minute on that payroll they got you on. $120? Really? I thought this was a pizzeria. I didn't know I was working at Sheen. $120 nowadays can maybe get you a pie of Domino's and a scoop of ice cream. I'm good off that. So the way I'm beating FNAF 1, I'm just not going to work. Maybe I'll go the first night, secure a cool 20 bucks for the eight hour shift. But after that, I'm good. FNAF 2? They pay even lower, but it's so easy, it's practically free money to me, so I'm doing it. And this one we deal with almost triple the amount of animatronics as the first one, and instead of the classic setup, we got two vents and one big vent right in front of us, which may look intimidating at first because it's so open and accessible, it's not. Because the second you throw that mask on, these animatronics don't be on nothing. They got this whole facial recognition mumbo jumbo that it doesn't let them see that I'm a security guard, which honestly makes no sense. I know damn well they can still see my ass in my security uniform gripping onto my chair for dear life. But hey, if it works, it works. And the other two that can bypass the mask, all you gotta do is use the flashlight and just wind the music box on the camera. It's easy. If I just don't take off that mask, constantly hold the flashlight and keep checking the cameras, I'm gonna be Gucci Kabuchi. But that's the first two games, which to me are the easier ones. But FNAF 3 though, this one is more difficult and completely different than the other two. Instead of facing multiple animatronics, which may seem harder, I'm gonna be faced head to head with the main man himself, Springtrap. He's a cold, calculated serial killer in a gold bunny suit. And he's also the creator of the animatronics, or co-creator. The point is, the dude is smart. And it's just me and him in his rinky dinky amusement park. What am I gonna do? And a lot of y'all FNAF fans may not like this answer, but I'm whooping him too. Look, I'm a fan too, but this dude's kill death ratio is almost entirely made up of kids. And like I said in the intro, I am a grown man now, standing at a tall, tall 5'9". I'm cooking him. Springtrap is going to catch the work. He's gonna wish those spring locks got him before. Oh, but he has a metal suit, so if you punch him, it's gonna hurt. Who said anything about punching him? I got the chair I'm sitting on, the fan right in front of me. There is quite literally a guitar right there. If Springtrap walks in, I will not hesitate to smack him upside the head with it. He's just Michael Myers if he was a fairy. And y'all know what I did to him? Realistically, only FNAF games I'm struggling with are Final Fantasy Freddy's 4, Ultimate Custom Night, and Sister Location. Final Fantasy Freddy's 4, because you play as a paranoid kid and look at these things. Ultimate Custom Night, because... 
is even happening? And sister location, bro, baby is 7'2". I am not dealing with that. And as for security breach, ruin, and help wanted, I can't say for certain. I haven't played those yet, but... I'm sure I'm about in those too. As you guys can see though, just like the action in horror movies, there's only a few games that can really stand in my way. I mean, I'm still pretty much unbeatable. Let me know any parts you guys think I was wrong or right about, and let me know any more horror games you guys want me to go over for a part two. I, I know I missed a lot. Also, let me know if you guys want me to play any of these horror games or any other horror games on a second channel. I'm thinking about making one in the future, but <laughs> I don't know. I wouldn't want to make anyone jealous of my gaming skills, you know? <laughs> let me know for real. And moral of the story, Get your ass over! Now we need a break. Try to run away, try to get away. So we could be.